the guise of Goliath Augustus, and throughout the world in the guise of Goliath Sin, and the greatest of all Goliaths, Death. The whole of Satan's army is armed it to the teeth and will laugh to see Jesus go forth against it with an apparently useless weapon. <coughs> As the first Goliath laughed at David with his little sling and stone. Jesus' victorious weapon will be of something softer than stone. It will be of wood, a wooden cross. Here in the Incarnation, we already see the death and resurrection of Christ. The free eternal God has clothed himself in our human nature in order to unite us back in communion that had been lost in the fall. This is that joy. This is what we here are commemorating on this feast day. The re reality of God having entered time and space in an incomprehensible way. And we know this here through revelation, not through just study, not through reading a few books, but God's revelation who foretold through the prophets these events that were to come. These magi who follow the star, stop and think about it for a minute. A star that guided over a year and a half or more, that shone brightly in the day, shone at nighttime, the star that when the three magi went in to see Herod disappeared. A star that when they came out appeared once again and led them to the Bethlehem. It stood, the star stood over the king. The fathers write and say it's not a star. It appeared like a star. It was an angel who guided them all this way. These three pagans came bearing gifts to a king. And that little baby is the king of all, God himself. Here for us to come and see this truth that has been revealed and given to us here in the church. Because through Christ in his church, we can be forgiven our sins. That's the joy that has entered into the world. It's this that we should begin to focus upon and to understand and begin that process of slowly changing ourselves, to come to understand that with it goes a requirement. A gift has been given to us, a gift of life, eternal life, a gift that says, you shall eat my flesh and drink my blood which we participate in in every liturgy. This is the gift that you and I have received because God humbled himself, obedient to the Father, and picked up his cross and destroyed death. This is why we here are here, and this is why we here believe, because it's been revealed to us by Christ in his church that this is the we're to follow the example of these three wise men who through a revelation left everything. Can you imagine going through the desert, coming this great way, following that which had been revealed to them? So we too are to follow that which has been revealed to us, that God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, that Jesus Christ is God-man, God incarnate. And we here have been given life here in the church. As God freely became man, so you and I, each of us individually, freely must choose that which God has revealed to us. Young, old, it matters not. Great school, going to college, 
mothers and fathers, grandparents, equally applicable to each and every one of us, to begin to take heed to the words of Christ, to begin to understand that this life is passing. We're here today and gone tomorrow, but Christ is here for all eternity. And that which we can give to our families and to our loved ones is the truth. That abides forever. And this is what is being revealed to us here in this feast day of the Nativity of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. Dear ones, we've been given life. Where else in the whole world can you find forgiveness of your sins? Without any requirements other than we humble ourselves and say, Lord, forgive me. we can hear what Christ said to those whom he healed. Thy sins be forgiven. Go and sin no more. This is the feast today that we participate in. We hear in some small ways we begin to struggle and grasp that which the church is teaching us through all the services that we've been going through. I suggest for you to look up all the old references to the Old Testament readings, to read them again, because all has been foretold and all has been fulfilled. He who had been long awaited, the Messiah, God, has entered time and space and become man. We will rejoice in this feast and we will take this feast with us, not only for tonight,